Welcome to this video where I present the educational scholar Ron Griffith's description of the research teaching nexus. This description is interesting for describing research-based teaching and learning and practice in teaching situations. Griffith's starting point is that universities and other institutions of higher education often struggle to strategically bring teaching and research together. Nevertheless, there is a generally accepted view that teaching should be research-based. That is, it is accepted that there is a nexus between research and teaching, although many would say that it is difficult to realize it in an effective way. One challenge is that there is no common understanding of what research is within universities and other higher education institutions. As I mentioned in another lecture, Different disciplines have their own conceptions of research and how knowledge is produced, which will also affect how the association between research and learning is viewed. Thus, when practicing research-based teaching and learning, teaching will thus be shaped by one's view of what research is. Without claiming to have identified what research is everywhere and at all times, Griffiths nevertheless suggests that research concerns what we could describe as three principles. First, it is about system a systematic process of investigation, which means that the search for knowledge is carried out using specific methods and practices. Secondly, research is also about advancing knowledge. What kind of knowledge is, is determined by the field of research, but in any case, the purpose of the research is to contribute something to the knowledge production within that field. Finally, Griffiths also emphasizes that research should be made public. By making research public, it can be subject to critical scrutiny so that it can be validated and its contribution checked by knowledgeable experts within that field. This is a description of research that most research areas can accept and recognize. However, as mentioned, there can be considerable variations in how these general principles are applied and the weight given to each principle. I have addressed this issue in another video lecture, so if you're interested in knowing more about this, I suggest you watch it. You can see the link in the, here in the corner. Given that there are variations between different research areas, uh, these principles can be used to emphasize the following aspects of how research-based teaching and learning in, is generally, how it is generally expressed in practice. Teaching can then, according to Griffith's thinking, be research-led, research-oriented, research-based, or research-informed. I need to emphasize that for our purposes, all four of these should be viewed as different aspects of research-based teaching and learning, even though one of the categories that Griffith highlights is defined as research-based. Uh, but I will come back to this issue in the next video. Moving on, going back to Griffith's. Teaching as research-led means that teaching is organized, according to Griffiths, in such a way that it corresponds to the research interest of the research area and the teacher. Here, the focus is on teaching the research results that the subject area evaluates and arrives at, uh, th that the subject area values and arrives at. Also, generally speaking, teaching as research-led entails that the students passively receive most of the knowledge while the teacher is the one who is more active. Teaching as research or research oriented goes deeper into the same research findings, but this time the focus shifts to the methods and practices that made these findings possible. Here, students are given theoretical knowledge about how research works. The student gets deeper insights into the basics of what, it's being, what is being discussed, but the students are also relatively passive in the teaching situation. The focus is still on the transmission of knowledge. Teaching as research-based means that students take a greater role in being part of the research process themselves, which they, uh, which they were not allowed to do in the two previous perspectives. Here, teaching is mainly focused on students acting as researchers themselves. The distance between teacher and students is accordingly reduced as the teacher gives more responsibility to the students in the learning process. Finally, Griffiths emphasizes that teaching can also be research informed. 
This means that teachers adopt the latest research on learning, the scholarship of teaching and learning in order to better develop their teaching. Thus, Teaching as a research subject becomes the focus and teachers strive to develop their teaching according to the evidence-based methods and models that have been shown to benefit student learning. Several researchers have found Griffith's description of the research teaching nexus useful for understanding and planning for research-based teaching and learning. One of them is the educational scholar McKeeley, who created a model based on Griffith's work. We now turn to that model in the next video.